His wife came to the door, loves everything that we do. She gave me permission, said yes. The moment that Tom rolled up, it was an immediate no. Hopefully they, they do reconsider and allow us to, to clear that area because it's, it's just the only place left in this entire radius. The family of a missing Cornelius man says he is still missing. Searchers were back out looking for Ralph Brown today, this time on private property in the Hess Creek area. GPS signals indicate the former Cornelius mayor was in the Newburgh area on May 17th. Now his family is concerned because he has dementia. Search crews say the best way to find Ralph may be his car, a 2016 blue Nissan Sentra. The thing with Ralph is like, I think that we've been so focused on this cell phone ping that it's been taking us away from what we know. We have Brian McKenzie that was just found 1.9 miles away from his house. We have Tammy that was less than five miles from her house. You know, how many cases have we now solved? Most people are going to be found within a five mile radius. So we, so we have Ralph's address. We know where Cornelius is at. And I think that we just start with the first the closest body of water and we just start whoosh, five miles out. And I think there's, you know, eight, nine bodies of water, but we can clear it in a day easy. Hello. Hey, Megan, uh, Jared Lysak with uh, Adventure of the Purpose. Oh, hi, how are you? Hey, I'm doing well. You know, Doug and I, we were just talking, you know, we have Thursday that just opened up for us. So we'd like to come back up to the area and approach this a lot differently than what we've been doing, but taking us back to our roots that most people are found within a five mile radius of their home. Mm -hmm. By chance, are you available on Thursday to, you know, come participate with us or, you know, at least do an interview with us so we can, you know, put a name with a face and, you know. A Absolutely. Yeah, that's actually my day off. So that works great. All right, let's see if we can find your grandpa on Thursday. Let's do it. Thank you so much for calling and reaching out. Here we are, we're now on day number seven as mm -hmm. far as us searching. And it's not just like, hey, Ralph has been missing for seven days. How many days has it been now? Oh, it's been over a hundred. I can't tell you at this point. I think it's been about three months, three and a half months maybe, uh -huh. um, since May. So yeah, I think about three and a half months. The entire family is kind of like lost right now. Like we've been focused on the Newburgh. Yeah. He's from Cornelius, which is 45 minutes to the north here where we're mm -hmm. at today. What's the family's thoughts on this? It's very possible that he was in Newburgh. He had that call with my Aunt Lori, and all of a sudden he thought, oh, I need to go home, you know? And so he might have doubled back and headed back here. It's very possible. And then he just got lost. If we didn't have the cell phone pings, where right. would we be searching? Right. We'd be like, all right, grandpa lives up here. Were we like four blocks from his house? About, yeah. Okay. And then we take that with a five mile radius. Because he's not been found on land, mm -hmm. that's where we come in. Right. When they're not found on land, it's like a five mile radius from home. Mm -hmm. So let's concentrate on that. What are we missing? Okay, so we're right here at the park right now. Mm -hmm. And up here to the north, you have this Forest Hills mobile estates. Okay. Now, looking at Google Earth, if we zoom in on it and we do a satellite image of it, it's within a community, but we have another case that we worked just not too long ago for mm. Brian McKenzie, and he was found within a homeowners association, mm. gated community. So I don't want to rule yeah. anything out for right. this five mile radius. So I mean, it's like, here we are. Let's start working closest to furthest for the next you know, five miles. But in looking at the satellite image here, I mean, if you look close at it, you can see all the moss. It looks really uh -huh. shallow, Yeah. but just because that's what we're looking at here on Google Satellite. We're gonna go put our eyes on every single body of water today. So we can, awesome. we can say, <laughs> we're scratching yeah. that one off. We, yeah. we don't want to rely on just looking at some satellite imagery. He was down in Newburgh. We shouldn't really be focused on the north end. So really there's only two bodies of water to the north that we're gonna go start with first. Okay. And then we'll start working our way further south. Same thing with the satellite imagery on this one here. Kind of zoom into it and same thing you can see that it's really shallow and the way that you can tell it's shallow is because you can see like the moss at yeah, the bottom okay. of it. And that's the council reservoir over there. But okay. again, we don't want to you know rule yeah. anything out. Some of the things as we were driving around last night as we were coming into town is you have a lot of these farmers with these private reservoirs. Mm -hmm. One that I was really interested in is if he was down in Newburgh, you know this 219 is what goes down into uh, the Newburgh area. Mm -hmm. Was it customary for him to come up on 219 or did he, you know, take 47 more often? Well, actually, he would probably take, because like you said, it said Farmington right there. He'd probably take that way, like towards Schultz and then go out that way, maybe. Okay. Um, yeah. And so the big one that I was really interested in is right here uh -huh. at Buckhalter. 
no, yeah. I, it was you know private property, no trespassing signs. Do you have any relationship, or does your family with these neighbors or with these farmers? Mm -hmm. No. But pretty mm -hmm. much everybody in the community knows. Oh yeah. Ralph yeah. And, yeah. Because you know I've been talking to just, just friends that you know I haven't spoken to in five years that live three hours away from me. They're like, yeah, Ralph was an amazing man. He was, he was my grandpa, not my grandpa, but he was, you know, my principal, or yeah. you know, he was my track and field coach. And you yeah. know, my, my wife and I, we met in track and field and we ended up getting married later oh on. Oh my gosh. So. It's so crazy, all the people that have come out, like, and the people who have wanted to volunteer and continue to volunteer, um, names that I've never even heard of, and they've been taking on the Facebook, or they've been taking on the state fair, and they've been doing things, and they continue to do things every single day. And I just think, like, if, if Papa was here, he would do that for them. There's no doubt about it. Like he would be the first one out. He'd be maybe not running the Facebook, but he would be at the fair. He would be doing all that stuff. So it's, it's showing what kind of a community that we have in the Cornelius and the Forest Grove area um, to come together for someone like this. And it's just crazy that there's been nothing, you know, and it's just kind of been dead, so. So, so tell us more about your grandpa. You yeah. Know, and you tell him, you Love know. Love to. <laughs> but yeah, like, like your, you know, best memories of him, but also yeah. the way that you view him in the entire community, some of his past history and the things that he's done for the community. It always felt like growing up, I was around a celebrity. You know, everywhere I went, um, we would we'd go to trips to West Virginia because that's where Lori lives. And even there, hi Ralph, you know, people would recognize him there. It's crazy. Um, but he he's the best grandpa. Um, he basically raised me um, very close, closest, probably my closest grandparent. We would, you know, he'd take me places every weekend and I just, I, it feels like there's a hole that's missing, you know, when he went away. Um, he's just, and he, he was always there for me. He never raised his voice. He never got mad. And I think that that's something that really made him such a good leader to everyone and to the community was that he had a way of communicating with people that made people feel like they're his friend or feel comfortable. And he's just an overwhelmingly great guy. Um, and he's missed by a lot of people, a ton of people. So I'm... I'm very sad that he's gone, but the person that he was the last two years because of his disease, it wasn't Papa anymore. He was really losing memories. He was losing, you know, where he was, and it was getting really scary. With the dementia and what you guys had experienced and seen with him, did it pass after a couple of hours to where, you know, we may think, oh, now he does recognize where he's at, and now he's going to make his way back home? bringing us back into the reason why we're back up here so focused yeah. on this today. I think the only way that he would get a memory is if that phone call that he had with Lori sparked something like, oh, my daughter, oh, my wife, I need to go home. But I, I really can't be sure because it's just it's just so hard because Lori says that the only conversation, the only thing that they said was, I'm literally in the bushes. And then she asked, well, could you be next to a golf course? And he said, well, maybe. And so we don't really have much besides, you know, the cell phone ping that he could have been there, but he didn't answer his phone after that. And so it's so hard to know what was going through his head. So even though Lori and Daryl were trying to get a hold of him for the next hour and a half, he didn't answer his right. phone, even though there's... Right. It's just, it's just crazy how someone could just disappear like this and not be seen or... We're, we're hoping that maybe, maybe the hunter will see something or see his car, like that we just need to see the car is all we need just to know, okay, he was here. If we don't find him, at least we found the car and we have some sort of closure that the car is found. With us, you know, kind of coming in in the very, you know, r really close to the very beginning of this, mm -hmm. you know, no family ever wants to think, oh, well, they might be in the river as well. Mm -hmm. And I sense that the family was kind of apprehensive at first of, hey, they're reaching out, they want to help. We really don't want their help because we don't want to believe. Like, it, kind of give me your feelings yeah. and, and the conversations that took place there. Yeah, I'm just glad that anyone wants to help and that you guys are willing to do it and not maliciously do it. We've had people that have reached out, canine units and stuff, and they've tried to charge us money. They They've tried to get publicity out of their service from us. So and I just want to know, you know, what happened? I just want answers. If he's in the, the river, great, we have answers, you know? That's, I, it doesn't freak me out in any way. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't, I think that we've all had closure. We've all kind of talked about it. We've all come to the agreement that, you know, he's, my, he's not coming back. And we just want to know what happened. Yeah. <laughs> so I think we're all, we're all okay with this and we, we all want an answer. And then with that, I just want to, you know, remind our audience here and, you know, say thank you that without them, you know, and without families like you, yours, share, allowing us to share your stories, other families around the world and around the U.S. are not, are not able to find us. And this <laughs> is how we found you is because one of our viewers told us about it. It's because of you, the viewers, that, you know, 
are a part of this from the YouTube views and the algorithm, from the Facebook algorithm and the monetization that takes place over there. Uh, once upon a time, we used to have brand integrations as well, but it just became too commercialized. Mm -hmm. You know, and one of the things that we were talking about before with the cameras even went on is you're like, you know what, I appreciate the way that you guys are doing that. It's in a very respectful way. So yeah. yeah. Like I said, at the end of the day, we're here to serve. At the same time, you know, we do put this on, you know, to share with the world. Right. To monetize it so we can help more families. So yeah, that's great. For no. that, if you've not yet liked or subscribed, please do so right now. And we're going to continue our day by jumping in the RV and let's go start searching some of these waterways. Let's do it. Because recently, two cases recently have actually come through that was in private gated yep. homeowner communities. And so we used to write them off. We used to also write guardrails off until the case in uh, Texas. Mm -hmm. And so as we continue to do this, we continue to learn and grow on all this as well. That we uh, are definitely a lot better today than we were a year and a half ago. So what we're doing moving forward, never rule anything out. We can now just put the eyes on it. We rule this one out. I think we have 10, 15 more uh, ponds yep. to go check out today. All the way out, you can see the undergrowth, which is typically two to four feet. So it's, unfortunately, it's not this place. We only have three or four bodies of water to the north here. So let's just knock them out real quick, mark them off our list, and then start focusing on the ones I really want to get to down in the south. But right here, you can see right here where all the trees are at. And so we'll just do a quick walk across the road. We got a big guardrail there, and it's actually all dried up. So that one we can mark off the list. There's nothing there. So even though it shows a bunch of water there, we're in drought season right now, completely dry. But while we're here, for kicks, it is water. We're just gonna put eyes on it real quick. You're just dealing with too shallow of a pond there. You can see all the moss just floating right there on top from the bottom, so. All right, two locations down. Let's go knock out two more on the north side and then start hitting the south side. So traveling to the next location, only about three minutes away from that last location. Small pond, I've not even looked at it on satellite. I mean, it's just a body of water that's on here. So we're gonna check that one off. Just to the south of that is a larger body of water. And then one more on the west side of this same road that we're on right now. Once we clear those three, that will knock out the north side of Cornelius here. And then we'll jump down on 219 for where my number one prime target is at today. Did you see that? That was uh, all completely fenced and gated and closed off. So we are not getting into that one any, at all. Private pond, private property, 100% gated. Here's the next one that we're most interested in on the north side. Completely drained up, shallow. Nothing in there either. Megan, your aunt Lori had mentioned the Jackson Bottom wetlands. Now, I pulled that up on Google before, looked at some of the images. It looks like some of this stuff to where it's like really shallow. I'm really most interested in this one down on 219. I want to get down to this reservoir right here called uh, reservoir number two. And we'll head over here to see if we can get some uh, permission to jump onto it. So how are you doing? We're in the area looking for a Ralph Brown, and our specialty for our, our search team is underwater sonar. We're looking for access and just covering every pond between here and close to Cornelius within a five mile radius. Reservoir number two over here is of interest for us. Do you know who owns that? The owner just pulled out. So. Okay, excellent. So this next driveway here. Yeah, you just go down this driveway. His wife came to the door, loves everything that we do. She gave me permission, said yes. The moment that Tom rolled up, it was an immediate no. So anyway, there's uh, more to search. So I think that if um, you know Grandpa's coming back up 219 by chance yeah. from Newburgh, I'm gonna say let's make a left because it comes into the backside of the golf course and everywhere, and let's start searching some of those waterways. Yeah. Here's that other body of water that's on the map that was our next location here. That's actually empty. There's no water in there at all. Hey Sam, last night you were saying that you know this guy that has worked over at uh, a ducky farm or something like that? Yeah, the, the peachy pig farm. Uh, 
Actually, I used to work with um, a family member who oh. lives out there. Oh, so they own it. Oh, well, so let's go. That's, that's actually the next one on Johnson I, I School Road here. Would. Yeah, Johnson School. Okay, so let's head up there and uh, yeah, go say hi. Say hi and see if it's a potential that we need to search that. Yeah. Sounds okay. Good. Cool. So last night, as we were scoping out some of the properties, one of the big ponds that we were most interested in, Megan, was this Jesse Reservoir. Have you heard of that before? But as we came here to go down this road to it, we were like going to camp at it, um, but it's private property, yeah. Forest Hills Farms. So we tried calling that number and they also have a big office down here. Nate, do you know who Ralph Brown is? No. The missing former oh, mayor. Oh, yes, yes. So he's still missing, his yeah. car's still missing. Totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know who we are? Uh, no. Okay, <laughs> so uh, we're Adventure of the Purpose. We're a volunteer underwater sonar. Okay search yeah. and recovery team, we also yeah. dive. Jesse Reservoir back here yeah. is an area of interest. Okay. Can we gain access and permission to go do so? And we'll be on the water 15 minutes, clear it. Yeah, it should be no problem at all. Let me just call my boss, who's the owner, but it should, he, cause he's out right now, but I mean, he's- Awesome, appreciate it. Yeah, uh, all right, perfect. I will, uh, I'll let him know. You're good to go, man. Awesome, hey, appreciate I appreciate it. your yeah, help. have a good one. Thank you. So we do have a lot of bushes around here. But she said that he said, I'm literally in the bushes. And I don't think he'd say something like that. That just doesn't sound like something he would say. Well, but we do have another reservoir like a mile down. So Hold we're on. there. So it is right there. So it's just down the road. I mean, we're that's where you pulled in. Go okay. around Tongue Lane. Okay. Um, and it's down down in there. Okay. It's the so, Myers Pond. And there's no gates at night or anything, like if somebody wanted to be in there at 11 uh, p.m., they can gain access to This one, it. yeah, typically, this gate, especially in the summer, gets closed really inconsistently. Perfect. Let's go do some sonar work. If you have never seen our sonar overview before and how we actually use sonar, I'm gonna give you a quick little overview of how we triangulate and use these different monitors. This one over here is our Garmin. This is our live scope. So anything that's happening is happening in real time on this one. Currently we're at 8.6 feet deep. Here's the 8.6 and this is above the waterbed. So if there's a vehicle down here, it's going to pop up and show up on screen here. This one over here is more of a picture in time. This is the hummingbird. So this is down imaging and this is side imaging. Normally for side imaging, we like to be casting at 75 feet left and 75 feet right. So we're gonna make that adjustment to 75 there. And so anything that's black is water column. And so you'll see right here, eight feet. And here's our lines 18, 36, 54, 75. So roughly eight feet is where we're at. Same thing with down imaging is from the bottom of the boat to the bottom of the waterbed, or the, for the, the pond in this situation, the reservoir. And so that will cor correlate with eight feet and eight feet. And that's kind of a quick little sonar overview for you there. So one of the things that we're looking at on screen here is right now, you can see this dark pattern over here. That dark, dark pattern is because we're actually still close to the shore. Remember, we're casting 75 feet to the right. And so anything right here is picking up on the undergrowth right next to it, as well as part of the bank there. So we want to move out. So right now we're roughly you know, 70 feet or so there. And so you got some foliage here. You got a little something underwater here, but nothing as far as a car yet. Yeah, see, we're getting deeper over here next to the, uh, the uh, dam. So we're at 14 feet now. The other thing that we look for when we uh, do these searches on the ponds, one is we always run the perimeter looking for any locations to where a vehicle could potentially enter it. Like all of this with all the trees, way too thick to get through. Once we do the entire outer perimeter and identify what locations have potential, then we're going to do a second pass by moving in. Because remember, we've, we're currently casting 75 feet to the right, 75 feet to the left, plus taking uh, you know, a variance for the depth of it 
for what our reading is going to be. We're then going to move over roughly 50 feet so that way we can cover some of our tracks on what we've already hit and then that's going to put us out another 75 feet or so. So by the time we're done with two passes, we will have covered roughly 150 to you know 200 feet. So that kind of gives you a good idea of our thought process and the way that we do this as we're out here on these bodies of water. Is Normally they're really close to shore. Since we're right here and this is just really skinny, let's just knock out the middle of this real quick so that way it takes care of the center perimeter search that we would normally do. Still running 10 feet, nine, 10 feet. I have like a little bit of a mill foil or something over here. But other than that, just nothing down here. All right, so that clears this uh, reservoir. We'll go give um, Megan the good news and the bad news. Good news, bad news in all this. Mm -hmm. We have another location that we have checked off. Bad news, of course, is we're still looking, so. might be deeper over there where they have that irrigation stuff going on right right now we're at 2.7 through the bottom it's super super uniform I don't see anything crazy jumping out and we're only 2.7 2.8 we're not even three feet deep here one foot two foot yeah it's, it's gonna continue to yeah. Shallower. yeah it's shallower so we're, we're probably gonna spin this around here well I, th I think we kind of suspected that this yeah uh, but it's better that now that we know. Yeah, now we've taken our, you know, our guessing and our suspicion out of it. And we know that this is just way too shallow. So we've had um, vehicles that have actually gone over guardrails before. I don't feel as though Ralph was driving like erratic or anything or that he's going to go over a barrier like this. If he was down in Newburgh, and he was coming back to the area, you'd be coming up this road, back towards Cornelius, and accidentally coming down over that berm and into the river right here. So it's about four or five feet deep right there. Yeah, not real deep. No, just got a log there. Definitely not deep enough to hide Yeah, not, not on the bend right there. Come around here a little bit more. That was only about three feet deep right there. Same thing. Yeah, three, three feet deep. With zero evidence of any um, scuff marks or anything coming down the sill side. All right, well, another green check mark. Or X or whatever we want to call it. Uh, 1.54 in the afternoon. I feel like we're doing really good as far as knocking things out. We got to get you home though. Yeah. <laughs> it's been really good hanging out with you today. Thank you so much. I wish we had already had answers for you as to, hey, we found, you know, grandpa. We'll do. Yeah. And again, you know, we just want to thank everybody, you know, as well as your family for participating in this, you know. Everybody around the world is a part of AWP. Mm -hmm. So yes. we do have to remind them, you know, if they've not subscribed, tell them to do so. Yeah, likes and comments. <laughs> <laughs> do all that because it really does help you know, spread awareness as to what our capabilities are and what we do for these families. Not every family do we find the answers that they need to bring their lost loved one home, but we bring them answers as to where their lost loved one may not be so you can right. start searching other places. Right. And, Anything's helpful. Uh, I'm still hopeful that we're going to be able to help out. And if anything, could we continue to spread awareness? Right. Yeah. We'll keep doing our part to spread the word. Thank you for being here with Thank us today. You, and we'll, I'll update you later on today as to those other locations. Perfect. All Sounds right. good. I really appreciate it. Excellent. Yeah. Thanks, Megan. Yeah. Okay, 
I was interested in three more bodies of water right here. Private property, high fences, chains everywhere. Right up here where this little pump house is at is where a pond is at. That's this pond right here. Your destination is on the right. So that one rules that one out. This one looks like it's also in those private roads in here. <laughs> in fact, look, the fence just got taller, Doug. Wow. It's twice as tall now. And we'll double check it down here and then the third one down here as well. So I'm confident, Doug, in saying 100% we can rule that one out. And then there's one more right there where that big berm is at. There's the third one is inside of the gate right there as well. Sam, I think we're gonna come in the back way to your buddy's property here, maybe. I mean, this kind of looks like a main road, slow. It doesn't say no trespassing. Are you familiar with uh, Ralph Brown, who's missing? No. The former mayor of Cornelius. Oh. Okay, so we're part of a uh, underwater search team that's come into the area to clear all bodies of water of potential, either foul play or potential suicide is what we have. And there's one pond on the property right. here. That's on, that's belong, that belongs to the farm. Okay. Um, you probably want to talk to Greg. Do you have Greg's number? I do, yeah. We're not the owners. Okay. <laughs> he's, he's Greg and Kara that own the farm are my uh, um, I do like this farmer. He, uh, we had to wait for him. We had to track him down. Um, but he did say yes, absolutely. Go check out the pond. Hopefully you can find him. Oh, this thing's already low. Look how low this thing is. I'm gonna say that you're gonna be like, three feet. yeah, any, anything going into this, you're gonna see it. Yeah, right here. So, I mean, you have zero marks of any sort going in. We'll check the dam over there, but I don't see anything over there either. You know, with these long days, I like, I always feel like so defeated, Doug. We've marked off a lot of places, and we also have a, we're, we're going out of this with a huge question mark. Yeah. Let's head down here, uh, Iowa Road, a little bit more. Let's go check out this one is right along the road as well. So let's go down south a little bit more. There's one right along the road for another pond. So if you take a look at this, Doug, I mean, we've hit like every body of water around Cornelius, heading up to Cornelius, down from Cornelius. We're currently here. We went over to Forest Grove. We did all of those. The only one that we really have left for this five mile radius, in fact, it's outside of the five mile radius, but it was of most interest to me, was the one this morning Tom. with Tom's property. So let me do this and let me just send Cindy one last text and just let her know we're wrapping up for the day. By chance, would you mind letting us on the property? Hopefully they they do reconsider and allow us to, to clear that area because it's, it's just the only place left in this entire radius that, that we haven't checked. And honestly, it to me, in my opinion, it was probably the most promising. So I have, hello Cindy, we have spent the afternoon with Megan, Ralph's granddaughter, and have cleared over a dozen ponds in the area. By chance, do you think Tom would allow us to wrap up our day in clearing your pond as well, just to take off any speculation that Ralph may have ended up in there by accident or on purpose? We would love to give the family answers one way or the other, for it means a lot to them knowing where they no longer have to look. Please let me know in the next 20, 30 minutes if you don't mind so we can schedule a if it is a go. Thank you for your time, Jared. So let's see what comes in on that one. Yeah. Ready. Now. Yeah. Day seven. We've spent seven days searching, looking, going all over this part of Oregon. You know, we spent around Cornelius, his hometown. Yeah. Uh, we marked off a lot of places that we know that he's not, so that's definitely a win in that area. But Ralph is still out there. 
Um, yeah. And my heart goes out to the family. And actually, as we were getting ready to pull out, I saw that uh, his wife came out and gave you an embrace. She did come out and she gave me just like probably one of the biggest hugs I've ever had in my life and expressed how grateful she was for us. You could feel her gratitude, yeah. you know. We came here with the focus of coming back to where Ralph was from, clearing the immediate area. And like you said, we've, I think I'm up to like 13 places today. We are collectively with where we yeah. thought he, yeah. you know, were great targets to check. All besides one, which we weren't allowed access to. So, yeah, but, but, um, hopes, but hopes they'll reach back to us yeah. and we'll be able to Hopefully, we, you know, we, we did send a follow-up text message mm -hmm. to try to get into there, as you guys saw. And one of the things I want to say, you know, we've had locations like this before where they flat out said no. This one, I feel like it was, you know, it, it was genuine. He has a genuine reason. That there's nothing that was sinister or yeah. foul play or anything right. about it. Right. And so, you know, I do want to say, those of you watching, you know, don't attack them in the comments down below. I feel like they're incredible, great people, but they just have had something in their past that says, you know what, we just don't play with anybody. I mean, they have our information. They know who we are. And like I said, we're going to be back in the area. Do I say that, you know, Ralph is in there? I cannot say, I, I can't even say 10% chance he's in there. But, you know, our whole purpose today was coming to, you know, that five mile radius from his mm -hmm. house and right. just clear every property, put our eyes on everyone that we could. You know, and we often also say, you know, people say, oh, well, it's been searched or you don't have to worry about it or it's, you know, X, Y, Z. And we always say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, until we put our eyes on it, you know, it doesn't count. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we, we have to see, we have to know with our own heart that that it's cleared. And the importance of like a story like this and, and, and sharing and letting people know that you're aware that somebody's missing, that, I mean, that's, that's the big key to it, all of this is the, letting people know and, and, and sharing this because we're here because of you guys. Without you guys, we wouldn't be able to do this. And also a uh, big thank you to Megan. That's Ralph's granddaughter. She spent the day with us. Yeah. Outstanding young lady. It was really nice being able to talk to her and get her perspective you know, from the family as yeah. well. Uh, on that note, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. Follow us for the next adventure. And we'll see you on the next one.